Now let's get to the practice two problems um, dealing with the precipitation reactions or those, those double replacement reactions trying to predict the products. So this one says, please write the molecular complete ionic and net ionic equations for the reaction between solutions of silver nitrate and sodium chloride. So first let's get down those reactants. So silver nitrate is AgNO3. You don't even have to look on the solubility table. It told us this is a solution, so we know this is an aqueous. And I, I want to just double check my charges, plus one, minus one. Yep, that's a one-to-one -one ratio. And then sodium chloride is my other solution, NaClAq, plus one, minus one. Yep, that's good. So let's get my arrow here. What are the products going to be? So let's switch these ions. So the silver will go with the chlorine. I'm just going to get that all set. Plus one, minus one, that's good to go. Notice we're always balancing these charges before we balance coefficients. I think I, I want to keep re reminding you to do that. And then sodium nitrate would be my other product. I sometimes have students ask, does it matter which one of these go first? And really, that, that would, wouldn't matter at all. It would be saying, like, oh, I have one apple and one banana. And then someone else saying, oh, I have one banana and one apple. You have the same thing still. So it doesn't matter the order. So I got this, and that's a plus one, minus one. So it looks like these charges are also balanced. Now let's balance the coefficients. One silver, one silver, one nitrate, one nitrate, one sodium, one sodium, one chlorine, one chlorine. Looks like that's good. Okay, um, now we gotta predict these, these states of matter for my products. So silver chloride, let's look at our solubility table. Looks like chlorines are usually soluble, so we're getting ready to write an AQ there. Except that silver is one of those exceptions. So silver chloride is insoluble in water. It will form a solid, and we call that a precipitate. Okay, sodium nitrate. I'm hoping soonish you're, you're memorizing that those, those sodiums are always soluble. So sodium is always going to be an AQ there. It's going to just save you some time kind of down the stretch. So that's an AQ. So this would represent our molecular equation. Now, what's the complete ionic? We just want to separate all of these compounds into the respective ions, and that's only if they're soluble in water, only if they have dissociated. So my complete ionic, I would have one silver plus ion dissolved in water, so I have to write AQ. I would have one nitrate ion, one NO3 minus, dissolved in water. Those are reacting with one sodium ion dissolved in water, so that's aqueous. And a chlorine ion dissolved in water, that's aqueous. And it looks like these would be producing silver chloride solids. We, we can't split that apart because it's solid. It's not dissociating in water. It's not dissolving. Now that sodium nitrate is dissolving. It's aqueous. So we get Na plus aqueous and NO3 minus aqueous. Okay, so that would represent my complete ionic equation, everything. And I know this is tedious and it's a lot of work, and we're not going to make you do this 10 times on an assessment, maybe just once. So now let's look at what's repeating here. Silver, nope, nitrate, yep, I got that on both sides. I can gently cross it out, not erase it. And it looks like I got a sodium on both sides, so I can get rid of that guy. So what does this really, what does this reaction really represent happening? I guess silver ions in solution are reacting with chlorine ions in solution to produce silver chloride solid. So this would be my net ionic equation. Okay, down below, let's look at these problems. These are more like logic questions. You don't really have to do as much work rather than just look at them and look at a solubility table. So this question says, which of the following pairs will have a reaction when combined? Now, I've noticed sometimes solubility tables, they sometimes have slight differences to them. And I think that's okay because we're really practicing how to interpret data and how to look at information we're presented with. So let's just, let's just look at each of these. Um, I don't think we want to write out all these equations. Let's just look. Like what happens when silver goes with chlorine and what happens when sodium goes with nitrate? So when silver goes with chlorine, there's chlorine. Remember, silver is that exception. I guess that, that's... That's a solid, so 
you will see a reaction when you mix these two substances together. Let's check out this next one, NaCl, NaOH. You got that same cation. I don't even want you to look at a solubility table for that one. I want you to notice if any of these ions are the same exact substance, nothing's going to happen. But what about sodium chloride with potassium nitrate? Sodium, we'll go with the nitrate. Let's look at our solubility table. Nope, sodiums are always soluble. So nothing there. What about potassium chloride? So chlorines are usually soluble. Potassium's not that exception. Potassium is also always soluble. So I think if you mix these two things together, nothing will happen. What about potassium chloride and lead nitrate? Well, the potassium is going to go with the nitrate. Potassium is always soluble, so nothing there. What about the PB with the CL? Um, it looks like chlorines are usually soluble, but lead is another one of those exceptions, I, I guess. So for that, this lead chloride would precipitate out. And using this solubility table, I would say this would represent a reaction. Um, what about Na with Cl? Nope, sodiums are always soluble. What about Ca with OH? Looks like hydroxides are usually insoluble. Calcium is not one of those exceptions. So calcium hydroxide is insoluble in water, and a reaction would occur there. Now, in this last example, we have ammonium. Don't forget that this NH4 is the, that polyatomic positive ion, the cation. So ammonium hydroxide, it looks like ammonium is always soluble here. So I would say nothing there. And what about lithium and chlorine? Chlorine, soluble, lithium not there. No, nah, nothing's going to happen there. So these three combinations would be the pairs that might... Um, you should see a reaction occur. Down below here, last problem. If unknown substance AB is added to a solution of silver nitrate and no reaction occurs, this means both products are, are aqueous. So I'm going to focus on my silver here because nitrates, look on our solubility table, nitrates are always soluble. So that BNO3 is going to be aqueous. So let's, let's figure out AGB. Um, let's see if AGB would be soluble. So we're going to focus on here. What about AGCL? Chlorine usually soluble. AG is an exception, though. So I guess this would create a solid. So that would would be a reaction. We're looking for no reaction. Okay, what about Ag going with the OH? Silver hydroxide. Let's look on our solubility table. Um, hydroxides are usually insoluble. Silver is not an exception. So I guess that again would be a solid and you would see a reaction. What about if we put um, the silver nitrate with sodium? And what's this big thingy? You just look on your polyatomic ion chart. It's, it's the acetate ion. So what if we got AgC2H3O2? Okay, here is the acetate ion. And this time it looks like silver is not an exception. So I guess silver acetate is soluble in water. So if this is soluble in water and this random BNO3 is soluble in water, I guess this would be no reaction. Nothing would happen if you mix them together. So just, just to double check here, what about Ag with PO4? And this would really be Ag3PO4, but we don't, we don't even need to do that right now. We look on here, phosphates are usually insoluble in water. Silver is not one of those exceptions. So I guess this, this would be a solid, and you would see a reaction there. So this is the only combination where no reaction occurs. So I hope this is just good practice with how to use a solubility table.